So you're getting back into Minecraft, but it seems a bit scary, almost like an entirely different game, right? I mean, after all, mining at Y13 won't find you diamonds anymore, sometimes zombies will throw a trident at you, and you can do whatever the heck this superhero landing is in the vanilla game. Here are the 55 biggest changes that have happened since 2018 to keep you up to date with everything that's happened in Minecraft, like the world seeds changing entirely. Minecraft seeds are now 64-bit on both platforms, and also they can be used interchangeably whether they're Bedrock or Java. The only thing that will change are various structure placements, but also the entire overworld generation is different to when you last left the game. Now, instead of having relative hills be the highest point in Minecraft, there are now massive mountain biomes. Not mountain biome, mountain biomes, because just like goat horns, there's a ton of them, and you probably don't know the names of all of them. By the way, goats exist, and they will sometimes drop their horns, and playing them gets a kind of strange result. <laughs> It's not just mountains that have changed, oceans were changed entirely in the update Aquatic, now giving us seven distinct ocean biomes. Warm, lukewarm, cold, deep warm, deep lukewarm, deep cold, and deep frozen, in addition to the iceberg biome, which is a great place to go for a drift. So the world generation has changed a huge amount in terms of oceans, mountains, and all of the other biomes, mangrove swamps, bamboo forests, and jungle variants, uh, but also villages have changed too. This used to be the most basic structure in Minecraft, every village looked basically the same, just with a different color palette. However, now there are five very distinct variants of the village, as well as 13 separate professions which the villagers can take on, not including children and nitwits. Uh, but this means that trading has had a complete overhaul, and you can find entirely different items from this, including this new wandering trader who you don't need to find inside of a village. He'll spawn randomly around your world and offer you the sorts of things you might not have found yet, like saplings, glowstone, or gunpowder. Okay, when he offers to sell you both that and sand, he's basically asking for this to happen, right? On the subject of doing bad things to villagers though, illagers are no longer confined to their woodland mansion. Instead, they scout across the land, making these pillager outposts, and also sending pillager patrols scouting for local villagers. If you kill one of these guys and then go to a village, it will start a raid, which can be a great source of loot, as well as potential trade discounts. However, it is also quite a risky thing. It's kind of like a mini boss fight. Speaking of mini boss fights, fishing is no longer the only way to obtain fish. Instead, you can go right in the sea and you'll find them swimming around as mobs. In fact, they're not the only new mob for the seas. There's also dolphins and drowns found around here. Dolphins will give you a small boost to your speed, whereas the drowns will straight up attack you. In fact, the drowns not only use their zombie-like attack, but they also can sometimes throw tridents, which if you're lucky, they'll drop when you win the fight. This is one of the coolest weapons in Minecraft, but it's also one of the highest damage attacks that exist in the game, so bear in mind there's a high risk but a high reward there. By the way, once you kill any mob under the sea, you'll notice how the item will float up to the surface. This is because water now has buoyancy, which means that everything besides undead mobs will now float up to the surface, whereas, uh, you know, like I said, zombies, skeletons, and even skeleton horses will stay right down there at the bottom. This makes the bottom of the sea a scary place, but allows for lots of fun contraptions because items will always float to the top of water, allowing you to move things vertically quite easily. Something else you should note about the water is there's not just ocean monuments, which have existed since 1.8, but there are now also underwater ruins and shipwrecks. In some of these you can find maps which may lead you to hidden treasures which you can use to craft things like the conduit. The conduit is one of the cool new underwater items that is best thought of like an underwater beacon. It gives you underwater breathing, it gives you faster mining, and honestly it's just a really cool thing to have anywhere where you're doing underwater stuff. In much the same way, it's pretty cool to go underground and see the new biomes there because we have 3D biomes in Minecraft now, there are now specifically different cave biomes to what's on the surface, meaning you can now find lush caves, dripstone caves, and deep docks under any biome ever. It's really, really interesting when you stumble into one of these places because you might find yourself the warden, or you might find yourself all of these new lush blocks, or even dripstone, which, uh, let's be honest, actually is very useful for technical players, uh, but there are three new sets of caves, and you can find these anywhere around, and they have all sorts of exclusive blocks to be found, like azaleas, or glowberries, or the skulk sensor which allow you to do wireless redstone, by the way. Also, when you're down underground, you'll notice there is new stone generation because stone down to Y0 will look familiar to you, but anything below Y0 will look like this. It's a brand new block called Deep Slate, and you'll notice it especially in the deep dark because they'll only spawn surrounded by this stuff. By the way, I should totally mention the deep dark has an ancient city which is found exclusively here. Obviously, the Warden is the big headline mob, but it's also one of the biggest structures Minecraft has ever added. In fact, 
if you're counting by total area, is the biggest structure ever. It is an insane thing to find, and it's very, very fun, especially because there's an exclusive enchantment you can only find there called Swift Sneak. Also, there's fragmented parts of a brand new music disc, but that's not as much worth knowing about as Copper. You'll notice Copper the moment you see any cave, and this is a game-changing new resource. Let me give you the full list of reasons why you need Copper in your life. Number one, you can use it to make lightning rods or spy glasses. These are two brand new functional items that are very niche but very cool, but they're not as great as this second use, which is being able to craft copper blocks. It comes in stairs, slabs, and everything else. And then, you'll never believe this, but it doesn't actually have a third use yet. We're kind of waiting uh, for something fun to happen with it. It's one of those things they're going to revisit, like how Lapis Lazuli used to be only for colors, and then they made it an enchanting uh, tool. I imagine something similar will happen with copper, so keep your eyes peeled for the next five years for that. By the way, if you want to find any resource like Lapis, really anything besides copper, which is pretty obvious, uh, you might need to know about the new ore distribution. So like I said, mining at Y13 is not going to find you diamonds, or it's not going to find you diamonds on any real time frame. Instead, you want to go as deep down as humanly possible. That's because this is what the new ore distribution looks like now. In other words, diamonds are found more and more the deeper you go. The same is true for redstone, and everything else has a very particular layer that's best to mine at, which means that the best place to find iron is now up in the new mountains from before. Pretty cool, right? Also pretty cool is that raw ores are a thing. This means that no longer will iron and gold drop a version of themselves when you mine them. Instead, they'll drop a raw version, which you can use fortune on handily enough, and this has to then be smelted in a furnace. It's exactly the same, but you don't get the block unless you use silk touch, which is a cool little change. Also quite cool is they've added veins of ores, so iron and copper can be found in these giant veins underground, which can consist of thousands of blocks. But I think both of these things pale in comparison to the look of the brand new caves. Caves look a lot different than you're probably used to, and they're so much bigger now. There is so much more to explore, and because of the size of these caves and the massive amount of mobs they would otherwise spawn, they've actually changed the spawn lighting rules so that hostile mobs won't spawn at light level 7 or below, but now only in absolute darkness. This means that your torches are much more effective. However, if you want to use uh, lighting options, you don't just have to use torches or glowstone, or maybe a redstone lamp if you're being fancy, because now there are shroom lights, candles, lanterns, frog lights, and even campfires, which will handily also double up as a free furnace. Seriously, if you're cooking food on these things, there is no fuel cost, it just cooks it for absolutely free, as well as being a permanent light source, what is not to love. Speaking of things you love, everybody loves to find diamonds, and like I mentioned, they're not found at Y13, uh, they're found better the deeper down you go. However, if you mine below specific biomes, the swamp, mangrove swamp, and deserts, you might find super deep down fossils which will come with diamond ore embedded into them. This is a pretty cool historical feature, uh, kind of like archaeology you could say, uh, but it also is a great way to find extra diamonds. Also, if you're mining deep down, you might like to know that dungeons are more common below Y0 now. Rather than just mining around and hoping you hear some zombies and maybe that's a mob spawner, instead what you can do is you can mine specifically in the deep slate layer where you might find more dungeons. However, here's something weird, no matter how deep down below ground you go, you're not necessarily going below water level. There is still a sea level in Minecraft of Y63. This is what rivers and oceans are always set to. However, everywhere else has a local water level, which means caves can be completely flooded or have an underwater lake. Two adjacent caves can potentially have water at differing levels, which leads to some very wacky looking scenarios, which I love to see personally. Just like how you'll love to see geodes, so these are beautiful structures in their own right, but they're also immovable resource generators. There are, this is the only way to get the budding amethyst block, which is the only way to grow these amethyst crystals, which can of course be used for, okay, let's be honest, not very much right now, but tinted glass, the next feature is one of the very few cool recipes for, it, and you can use this to make glass that does not let Minecraft light in, but yet you can see through regardless. So if you want to make a mob farm where it is light level zero, but you still want to see it, then you can use tinted glass for exactly that. It's a pretty strange feature, what some would say, not as strange as something you'll spot near immediately in the overworld though, there are now dilapidated, incomplete nether portals found everywhere. This will come with a loot chest, which can contain some of the greatest stuff uh, for an early game player, like golden carrots or enchanted tools, uh, but it's also just a wonderful way to get started on a nether portal. These were added to the game primarily because a lot of players never go to the nether, and so adding a clear prompt as to how you do that is a good idea. They considered. Also, by the way, when you go to the nether, it's not going to look as bland and boring as it did before. There are now five separate biomes, the kind of old nether,
together, you know and love. But also there is a Crimson Forest, a Warped Forest, a Soul Sand Valley, and a Basalt Delta. Each of these has their own unique mobs, which means that- Oh god, no! Okay, well, you know, this is still a mob you should definitely watch out for. However, now you can feel safe when you're in two of the five nether biomes, because the ghasts won't spawn everywhere in the nether, instead they'll only spawn in the Soul Sand Valley, the Basalt Delta, and the Never Wastes, so the Crimson Forests and the Warp Forests are 100% ghast free. Or at least they can't spawn there. They could walk in there from a long way away. But yeah, every biome has specific mobs that spawn there, including these new zombie piglins, which I'd be lying if I said they were a wholly new feature. You probably recognize them as zombie pig men. However, they've been renamed to zombie piglins because there are now non-zombie piglins, which are these guys right here. They'll spawn in the Crimson Forest or the Never Wastes, and you can actually do trading with them by giving you gold, and then they'll give you something random in exchange. I'm gonna be honest with you, regular trading in the overworld is so much more fun because what sort of a store do you walk into and then you give them gold and then in exchange they give you something random and you can't return it. You know, that's what the piglin system is. It sucks for a lot of reasons, but it is a great way to get ender pearls, which is what a lot of people use them for. If you always felt the never was lacking a source of food, then good news, Mojang agreed with you. There are now hoglins which can be found in these crimson forests and these hoglins are very dangerous mobs, but if you kill them, you'll get some raw pork chops. Kill them with some lava or some fire and you'll get some cooked pork chops, which is of course one of the better foods in the game. However, if you take them to the overworld, they'll turn into zoglins. Here's another fun one. If you take piglins into the overworld, they'll turn into zombified piglins. That's right, there is now another way to make these guys, which if I'm being honest, don't have much use even now, but it's, it's kind of fun to find regardless. Also, if you want to find endermen, no longer do you have to just wander around the world and hope that they spawn. You can actually go to a warped forest, which is a biome that spawns exclusively endermen in the nether. I think it's a really cool place. I personally like to kill endermen this way, and it can be one of the faster ways to speed up your progression towards the end. You can also get enderpearls, like I mentioned, by trading with either piglins or with villagers in the overworld, and yeah, it does make the end a lot more accessible. However, the end hasn't really been updated since 1.9 and 2015, so if you're wondering if they've done something fun and exciting with the end, you know what? You're gonna have to wait another five Five years. Speaking of waiting five years, you might have to do that if you want to find the brand new nether structure in all of its forms, because as well as nether fortresses, now there are bastion remnants. This is the only place you'll find a piglin brute, which is one of the heaviest hitting mobs in the nether, so be warned, and also where you'll find some of the best loot, because you'll notice you'll find soul speed, a brand new nether only enchantment, and also where you'll find pig step, which is by far the best music disc. By the way, they introduced the first new mob spawner for a really long time inside one of these Bastion Remnants. If you want to get your hands on a Magma Cube spawner, you can do that in one of the four variants, which has it right down here at the bottom. You could theoretically farm these Magma Cubes for their creams, or you could get some frogs in there, because when a frog eats a Magma Cube, it poops out frog light, one of the most aesthetically pleasing blocks in the game. It's a little bit of a pain to do, but if you want a weird goal to go for in Minecraft, this is definitely a great one, because it will leave you with some of the best blocks in the game. Honestly, if you're getting back into Minecraft, I think having a goal is really important. I've made videos about goals before, but simply having something big you want to achieve is what makes Minecraft beautiful. However, what also makes Minecraft beautiful are these cute little strider guys. I mean, seriously, go to the nether and you'll see these adorable little fellas walking around. All you need to do is put a saddle on them and then use a fishing rod with a bit of fungus on the end and you'll have a biological lava boat. Much more in the opposite direction in terms of negativity, there are now Never skeletons. I'm not talking about wither skeletons, those still exist in uh, nether fortresses, but you can find skeletons just wild in the nether in the soul sand valley biome. This makes it a great place to go if you are trying to farm bones or arrows, uh, but also if you want to get your hands on some bone meal, you can break the bone blocks around here because there are fossils in the nether as well. That's right, there's deep down fossils and there's nether fossils. There are fossils everywhere, kind of Hints at archaeology, you might say, just like how when you're in these soul sand biomes, you might be confused by the soul soil, which is kind of like a soul sand variant, but it doesn't slow you down, it just is brown and also works for the soul speed enchantment. It's a perfect replacement for soul sand and even has the new soul lighting just like soul sand does, because you can light it on fire and it will be blue. It's actually pretty cool by itself, but also you can use this soul fire, uh, this kind of soul lighting idea, to make soul torches and 
and salt lanterns, uh, which are blue lanterns that have slightly less light than normal. Previously, if you wanted to make low light things, you'd have to use a redstone torch. Now you can use these new kind of spooky blue torches to get less light in there so it's dark without necessarily having mob spawn. I think that's a great idea. Also in the nether, by the way, you'll find a bunch of new vegetation. So the warps and crimson forests have their own entire ecosystems, basically, with all of these blocks, most notably the crimson uh, vines and also the, uh, the, the twisted roots. I think both of these are really handy for avoiding falls. Crimson vines grow from the top of something and twisting vines can grow from the bottom. In fact, use some of that bone meal you got earlier from the Soul Valley and you'll be able to grow one of these massive vines very quickly, which is really handy for traversing the big vertical sections the Nether can sometimes have. I personally really like that, but I also love black stone. It is a cobblestone variant found only in the Nether, or I guess you could say it's a whole own uh, variety of it, but it can be used uh, like cobblestone wood in a variety of uh, crafting recipes, including the furnace and also all of the stone tools. So uh, yeah, it's pretty handy to have in my opinion, and also as a bunch of variants, some of which are really darn good. You can also find these in the Bastion, it's worth mentioning, uh, alongside a bunch of Nether Gold. So as well as having Nether Quartz, there's also Nether Gold now. Uh, this can be mined to give you a few nuggets of gold. And unlike regular Gold Ore, which requires an Iron Pickaxe, this can be mined with a Wooden Pickaxe and still drop those nuggets, which is pretty darn great. However, the biggest advancement in the Nether, the one we've saved for last here, is the Neverite, the third and final brand new ore found here. This is one of the most interesting parts of Minecraft because no longer is diamond the best tool in the game. Now you can make a tool better than that. And what you have to do is mine four of these neverites, smelt them up, turn them into ancient scrap, then combine that with four gold, which can be found in the nether or the overworld, and then you'll get a neverite ingot. Put this on top of any diamond tool, and now you have the very best version of something that can exist. This is more enchantable. It has uh, faster mining speeds or breaking speeds or damage, or if it's a piece of armor, it has knockback resistance built in as well. And on top of that, it looks pretty cool. Something that might confuse you is the fact that people genuinely would like to turn their diamond hoes into neverite hoes. And uh, yeah, it used to be a meme that why would you waste your diamonds on a hoe? Now it is totally worth wasting your diamonds or even your neverite on a hoe. And the reason for that is because of the fact that it is the default tool for many blocks now, meaning not only can you hoe the ground to plant your seeds or your beetroot seeds down here, but also you can use the hoe to break leaves or uh, you know, the hay bale blocks or target blocks or there's a really long list of things they're very very good at in particular and that is a really cool improvement. Also by the way as well as uh, hoes having a use there is now a brand new tool in the form of a shield. You can craft this shield and it will go on your offhand and you can block incoming ta attacks by crouching. This is a great way to avoid taking any damage whatsoever. Speaking of new tools there's also the crossbow. This is a new alternative to the bow which can shoot the same arrows but it can also fire fireworks if you want to. Also there is the spyglass which allows you to see far away objects slightly closer. All three of these things are pretty great but they're not as wonderful as the new lodestone which will allow you to right click it with a compass and then that compass will always point to the lodestone rather than to spawn. Personally I think that you know the compass pointing north makes some amount of sense. The compass pointing to spawn doesn't really make too much sense but the compass pointing to one of these actually makes it one of the you know, better uses for the block in the game. By the way, how many woods were there in Minecraft when you started playing? For me, there were three types of trees, but only one type of wood. Now there are 10 types of wood after 1.20, and this is an astounding improvement to the game. It's a very good time to be playing Minecraft, most people would say, until they find out about the new emote system. That's right, there's now an entire system that allows your character to communicate with others non-verbally. So you can do uh, emotes like pointing over there, don't question what else that looks like. You can do emotes like rolling around on the ground and you can even do by downloading these weird partner emotes from Batman or Ben 10 or Halo. You can do the superhero landing, which I have to admit is actually a very cool thing to do in Minecraft. However, even though you can unlock some of these emotes for free by doing certain achievements, the vast majority are paid and look at these prices. It is uh, a very expensive 
uh, skin addition to the game. But Minecraft has a lot more microtransactions, at least on the version of the game most people play, Bedrock. Um, and uh, yeah, these are currently not on Java, it is worth mentioning. But just to make sure we don't end the video on a bad note, I want to talk about lots of new mobs. We could get this video up to 100 plus things, uh, but to make sure it's a nice 55 and 5, which everyone knows having nice round numbers is good, let's talk about brand new mobs as one big category. There are now allies, which will pick up items for you. There are axolotls, which are passive mobs attacking other aquatic creatures. There are goats who try to butt you off mountains. There are glow squids. There are bees. There are foxes. Brown mushrooms, which come with their own new food when you milk them, by the way. Uh, there are pandas, stray cats, and you can ask anyone who plays Minecraft about any of those mobs, and you'll go on a fun rabbit hunt trying to find them. And it's a very good time to play Minecraft with someone who has been playing for these last five years. However, if you're going to do that, whatever you do, just don't mention the phantom, okay? We don't talk about the phantom. That is the community rule that has happened while you've been gone. We don't mention it. We don't mention its name. We don't discuss what it does or how democracy works in the Minecraft world. And if you know all of that, then you'll have a good time when you get back into Minecraft. I hope you enjoyed this video, which of course took a lot of research and <laughs> editing to put together. If you did, maybe consider subscribing. If you really want to, you can immediately unsubscribe. But you know, like, give the button a look at least. And that's all I ask, because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.